welcome back, everybody. So, back again for some more drawings. And uh, this time we're going to go with some minis. Because uh, we are drawing Amy Shaw's and uh, Craig's uh, mayo and ketchup, as they are known. Uh, the double minis. So we've got a couple of different images. Or we've got two images to choose from. I'm going to let them choose which one their favourite is. Um, so, it kind, of, you know, kind of could... See what ones work. Craig and Amy. So Amy is a photographer. Craig uh, has a, a couple of things. He used to work for Lego, I believe, as well. And that was quite cool. So, um, so yeah, part of the kind of the automotive uh, world that I that I deal with um, and know, and I'm known for a number of years. Just throw my pens everywhere, trying to get a bit a bit more organised. Hopefully, Amy's online. But with Mini. We've been we've been selecting minis to do, and your minis were were on the selection. And I have got got that the got the the images there. So this is, I believe, mayo and ketchup. Yeah. Yes. Super, because one's white and one's red. I like that. Um, <laughs> and then, but this I like this image because you're outside Coventry Cathedral there. Yes, you are. And when when that, that when Georgina sent that over, I was like, I know. I know where that is because uh, you've got the new cathedral here and the old cathedral over here it's very very pretty um yeah, but what you can't see is you can't see me in the background holding all the tourists back <laughs> Go, no don't no, no don't, don't ruin the shot they were very confused and then i was like okay you can go now but, uh, they didn't really understand what was going on well you did a very good a very good uh, job of that chap so uh yeah that's <laughs> Yeah, it, it works. I like it. So, in terms of the images, which one do you, do you prefer? Oh, well, we were just having a discussion before we, we came on, and you wanted the, the, the one... I like the cathedral one, and Craig, Craig one. likes the other one. Well, I, mean, <laughs> I, I'm, I, might, I think with this one, though, we can kind of do one car up here, and then one car... So, they'll be a little bit further apart, but we'll be able to give both cars a proper... I think Georgina liked this shot because of the uh, the yellow and the countryside as well. So I, okay. I'm I'm open. To, I, I like both. So right, so how it how it works is is basically I I draw these without t taking the pen off the paper. So I draw the entire outline of what you see on there um, without lifting the pen off the paper. So I draw that. Um, and then I work all the colours into it. It's so all these kind of colours you see. It's got yellows and greens and blues and silvers and stuff over here. Uh, and golds and whatever. Uh, I, I work all these colours in to make the drawing. Um, and during that time, you tell me about what both of you do. Well, how, how you're involved in the, automot in the automotive industry. Who you've worked for. Um, and just some fun stuff about where you've been with the minis, really. And what, what kind of... Uh, Journeys you've been on and, and and whatnot. So does that does that kind of make sense? Cool, sounds good. So um, I'm going to start. So I'm going to get the drop as soon as that pen's down. I start drawing. So introduce both you know, introduce yourselves both both, both yourselves um, and yeah we can talk about yeah then you can kind of be like right how you how you started in the automotive industry um, and then also about the minis in particular. So we basically we just talk at you for the next forty five minutes. Well, yeah, yeah, basically. But I, 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 I might just occasionally just go. Oh, can I? Can you just or this or that? So I mean, from my, from my, we've known each other for many years, and from memory, it was a Bister Heritage event, it's, or it was a down at Bister Heritage, and it was with Tim Hutton. So um, what's funny is I actually looked at those photographs earlier today and I was like, oh, I wonder who I'll know in here now. Because the thing is, I've, I've been in the, the automotive industry now for a while that I now know people that I photographed in the past who I didn't know when I photographed them. So I picked up this, this random image on this album, Overdub, and I was like, oh, that's Ian. There so, he is. Yeah. There he <laughs> is. was the first, first time I ever went to Vista Heritage. Yeah. Um, and she said, yeah, it's that auto tweet up. And it's, I, it's the first time I ever... Um, yeah, really kind of met a bunch of people in, in the car world. And, yeah, you were one of those people. I, and I, I, was um, quite, I was doing a really cheesy pose where I was, like, looking down and I had a colourful top on. Um, I had, like, a pink... black and white, so yeah. I don't know. <laughs> oh, right, fair enough. Yeah, but it was, like, a, it was a penguin. I think it was a penguin or something on the front. It was a, a colourful top, anyway. But, yeah, I remember that. I, I remember that event. Uh, yeah, that, that's when I... That was 
my first kind of like, oh, Amy Shaw, a, a photographer. Um, so, yeah, so tell us, walk us through, like, what, um, where that went from there then, really. What, how, what happened next? What happened next? Well, I'd probably been shooting cars for less than six months at that point. I think I hadn't been, take, I hadn't, yeah, been shooting cars for very long. And then, um, yeah, I, I ended up meeting uh, Tiggy at Vista Heritage and sent her the pictures from, from the event as well. And she was like, huh. We've got this new event that we're going to do, or we've only done one of them, called The Sunday Scrambles. Would you like to photograph the next one for us? And uh, that's kind of how my relationship with Vista Heritage started off. And, yeah, that would have been about six and a half years ago, I think, now. Um, and so, yeah, my first car in shop seven years ago this August, it would be. Um, so, yeah, that's uh, that was a really cool event. Um, but no, other than that, I, I mean, that was when Vista Heritage was still a really tiny place and lots of crumbling buildings and, yeah, it yeah. had a bit of a different feel to it than it does now, uh, but it's still just as, just as cool. Yeah. Um, but then what was the first time that you guys went to Vista Heritage? That was my first, I, that's the first time I've ever been. Yeah, that was the first cool. time um, with Tim, because uh, we have done a few uh, tweet-ups, so it was kind of, it was before Instagram, really, it was like more about yeah. uh, people on Twitter. Um, yep. And then, it, so yeah, so Tim used to arrange them and be like, right, we're going to meet up here. And so he was like, oh, I've, I've now got it over at, at Vista Heritage. And I was like, oh, I've, I've never been. Um, and I, I think we had a bit of a look around Historit on that day as yes. well. That was it, when it was quite empty and it was lovely. It was really nice light that came through the, the, the top windows. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yep. so yeah, so that was that kind of event. But there was like a few journos there. Um, yeah. And you know, like Keith Jones and a few people who who I still you know talk to now, and it's, yeah, it's me you, too. Know, you know cool to um to do it. So yeah, so you did so you did that, and then so the 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 scramble as such. What what? So how did that? So how how was that? The first one. Ah, uh, the first one. I think I recently posted some images from their um their Sunday scramble, their virtual Sunday scramble. Um, last week, uh, weekend for last week. Really the really wet one. I think it was a, it was hammering it down with rain, either on the very the, the first one I shot or the, the one after that. And it was like all of the the, the is it what you call the technical yard? The middle bit. MT yard? MT yard. MT yard. There's a middle bit basically, which now is this like the beautiful like um area where everyone can get like coffee and, and bacon wraps and and um it was just yeah at the time it was literally just open fronted uh near a barn it's not quite barns because there was never any animals in it but um i don't know what you call them like sheds yeah they were just sheds yeah yeah and um so it was totally different and um yeah now there are these rooms that you can go and buy some lovely cars in now um, i saw that i feel sad yeah i didn't really go to this heritage until quite late on because i wasn't in the country at the time no yeah of course not i mean i've been i was living in denmark because Craig, you, now, now you, you from memory, don't, if I'm right, you used to work for Lego. Is that correct? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, that's a I mean, pretty, was... that's a pretty cool job. And so, some of the speed champions and stuff were were your kind of you, you were involved with them. Yeah, I started that line, so that was kind of a little personal project that I was doing while I was at Lego. Because um, I bought, I, I'm a car designer, so I'm a trained car designer. And when I went to Lego to design toys, I then sort of got a bit frustrated with. Well, I was designing ninja weapons for a long time for Lego, um, but in the sort of in my spare time, I was thinking up how we can do do cars better in Lego. So then, came up with Speed Champions, and yeah, we launched it. It's still going now. So it's what's like eight, seven or eight years now. I think that's been going. Yep, yeah, I've yeah. pretty much got all of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's been. It's, it was really fun because you have to think about a car in a different way. Um, so for me, like as a designer, it was a really good challenge because you are you're trying to kind of I don't know almost iconize cars. So you're you're really thinking about how how they look, but completely differently. Right. So, yeah, so, so ignore this one. I haven't done that one very well, but it will it will look better. That one's that one that I've started. It will it will look fine when it's done. So I'm gonna have to do some adjustments. But there's a basic outline done in one in one line of the two cars. It's that's, That's awesome. Cool. Mine looks yeah. amazing. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. This one will look fine. Don't worry. Yeah. There's plenty of red. You can just cover yeah, it red. Exactly. Loads of yellow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so it's quite it's quite funny how, how Craig's car ended up the colour that it currently is that you can see behind us and, and in the picture. 
Um, so Craig basically re it's a custom color. It's a custom <laughs> color. So Craig refound his first ever mini. Uh, yeah, this one behind us. Um, and when he found it on eBay, he was like, I'm, I'm just happy to buy it. We had no intention of buying a mini, and then he saw it, he said, I've, I've just got to get it. And then when he when he got it, um, they were basically, the, the person who had owned it before had, what, did they try to like, paint bits of it or something? Half of it was orange, and the other half was grey, and I don't really know what they were doing. It was it was weird. Yeah, they, but they basically, not done a good job. It was quite a patchy coloured car, poor thing. And then, so my, if, if you, you know, my dad, he used to be um, into classic car restoration, and yep. specifically the body spray map. Um, so we were like, can we just get him to just, you know, do a quick... He offered. <laughs> he he offered. offered. I was going to rattle can it. Yeah. So I was going to rattle can it with the matching colour, because it's still a, it was still a British Leyland kind of orangey red colour. I was just going to get some cans and just go over the patchy bits that were grey and, and tied it up. And then, yeah, Amy's dad's like, well, no, don't do that. That'll look rubbish. You'll have to, you know, I can do it properly. I've got all the spray gear, and it's only a couple of patches. It won't take five minutes. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. And so I found the co the colour code, and I gave all that to him, so he had all the information. He's like, oh, I don't need that. I'll just mix it up by hand, and I'll judge it by eye. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, well, yeah, yeah, okay, if you're sure. I mean, I don't mind just buying the, the colour-coded paint. He's like, no, 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 I can mix it by eye. And, um... We spray it, and it's like, ooh, looks looks a little bit, a little bit too red. That doesn't it? Like, yeah, oh, that's not not quite right. And when we pulled the masking tape off to look at the other panels, it was definitely way too red. <laughs> so, um, so he's like, oh, it's okay. I've got a bit of yellow, so I'll put a bit of yellow in it and mix it up. And um, and it, it looks like, oh yeah, that's that's better. I reckon we've got that. We've got that fine. Uh, so we let it all dry, and we by this time also we've run out of the paint anyway. Um, or at least we've run out of the, the right kind of paint and um, let it dry, pull all the masking tape off, completely different colour. Uh, and then sort of so Amy's dad's in bits then. He's like, oh, uh, I guess um, I'll, I'll just, I've got this colour, I'll, I'll throw a bit more red in that and we'll just blow over the whole thing. And so it ended up all re <laughs> Oh, at, at, at any point where you're like, uh, oh, this this may be not the best idea. I mean, oh. No, I was, I'm fine with it. I mean, I didn't, it, whatever it came out like, it was going to be better than it was. I mean, it was pr in a pretty sorry state when I picked it up. So, yeah. so when you um, picked it up, when you picked your original, you know, your, your mini you picked up off somebody else who'd had it, and it wasn't yeah. in, it was looking a bit sorry for itself, what, yeah. what did you go, oh, cheers guys. I mean, uh, yeah, th thanks, thanks for that. No, because I can't complain because when I got rid of it, it was basically going for scrap. I thought it had been scrapped. Oh, right, uh, okay. Yeah, so it was pretty sorry state when I got rid of it. To be honest, it's, it's pretty much not had any welding done since, so it's still good for scrap, but now it's shiny and red. So, <laughs> so yeah, everybody, it's fine. Don't worry. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Exactly. It, it will turn into a Flintstones car pretty soon. Yeah, the floor's pretty bad. <laughs> Well, it, it can't yeah. it can't be any worse than my Chevette, which is currently in for like a full like it's fully taken apart. It's you know it, it's eventually that will be back out, but uh, yeah, that was that you know when, when it went in for blasting, I think yeah. a shell was just about left, ju just about. <laughs> so so yeah, at some point that will be back out. Yeah, it's. Um... Yeah, and that's the thing, isn't it? You know, there's, the great thing about them is it doesn't matter how long it takes; they're not going to get worse really in that time as long as you store them, all right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no. So yeah, I managed to get it back, and it's been sort of just trying to recreate my 18-year-old car um, again for, since then. That's cool. So where, where where have you been with them? So obviously you've been to Coventry because yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me just say a bit more about the photos. Um, oh, yeah. So it was a guy, a lovely guy called Stephen Fisher in the Instagram Stephen Fisher photo, who sent me a message and he was like, "Hey, I just want to say, really have work, and would you like to have a photo, you know, a little photo shoot with uh, your minis with you and Craig?" And at the time, we just thought, you know what, we've never had anything like this before, and don't know if we ever will again. So yeah, go on then, let's have this moment documented because I don't often get in many photographs, let alone Craig and I in a photograph together. So um, yeah, I was like, yeah, let's do this. So. Stephen ended up saying, well, you know, you're, you're kind of commentary based let's keep around there, and um, yeah, we just did the shoot, which was uh, really good fun, and um, yeah, and, but then, uh, yeah, that was it, while it was still shiny, we thought we may as well, because then, not too
too long after that, um, or at the end, end of last year, um, I've ended up sending my mini off to Suffolk to uh, a guy called Chris at Crafted Classics Tuning, who has very kindly uh, kind of rebuilt my whole engine, which uh, is great, but I should have been picking up this week. Yeah, I think it was, yeah, this last week. week. No, but yesterday. Yes, it right. would have been yesterday. I would have picked it up and driven it back home, but obviously at the minute, I can't really do that. Yeah. So otherwise, we'd have had both of them in the background here. But, um, <laughs> well, I'm... I'm, yeah. I'm... I'm happy with the one. Well, yeah, even when having the one in the background, that's <laughs> that's yeah, that's good going. That's, that's you, you plan that. It's like you know how to plan a shot or something. I, it's it's good. <laughs> it's yeah. Fine. Yeah. Right. My life, my life, kind of dictated by Amy's compositions. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry. But, no, um, don't, don't be sorry. Of, no. <laughs> in in terms of, of trips and stuff, um, other than that Coventry trip, we've not actually done. We haven't managed much because you you got crashed into as well. So you were oh, yeah. off the road for a long time because it got crashed. Yeah, so we got ended up having half of it rebuilt on one side. So one side looks really nice, and the other side is starting to get like a few bubbly door sills. And <laughs> so did, did, I need didn't to, you have your yeah. mini crashed into? Bef- you had an incident in it before as well, didn't you? It was nearly written off before. Oh, yeah, that was the same. The same yeah, one. It was so, off the road for a long time. Yeah, so basically, I was uh, driving to go and get its MOT done, basically, and um, then I won't go into the crash, but uh, this guy ended up crashing into me, then driving off, and I was really sad. And then um, the insurance company were like, "Yep, yeah, that's a complete write-off." Um, and then I was like, oh, "Yeah, that was it." I was like, "I was thought I'd lost it," and it wasn't until the bloke, that, the different bloke, that came around to kind of get the how much it was valued at, and he was like, "This definitely shouldn't be being written off," and I'm going to um, argue it for you. And so he did, and then the insurance company ended up paying for my, my half rebuild, which was cool, and I got to keep a car. Oh, good. Um, yeah. So then once it's back, um, yeah, we should go on a little. Yeah, they're, they're, you want to take yours back to Suffolk? Yeah, I want to go back to Suffolk. I want to uh, drive around where I used to hoon around when I was 18 years old and not care in the world. <laughs> and create some but, of those memories again. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm a more careful driver now. I remember some specifically scary moments that I don't want to relive. So, yeah, I, I want to go back to Suffolk. Um, we've talked about doing a Peak District trip as well, haven't mm. we, a lot. Yeah, it's sort of it's thinking about not driving too far because they're, they're not too bad on the open road, but they do get a bit tiring. Oh, motorways aren't fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah mine screams. It's horrible. Be, yeah, be, you're... Being a Morgan three wheeler owner, I, I yeah, I can completely sympathise with the yeah, oh, yeah. A small <laughs> small car and, and large vehicles. I I um yep. yeah, it's uh, it's not uh, what well, what I don't know if you get yourself, but I, you get a lot of people like looking at you because they're like, oh my god, it's that car. And and then you end see them kind of ended up kind of swerving towards you whilst they try to take a photo or something stupid. Yeah, they are often in the. I notice that people always sort of slow down in your blind spot when you're going along the motorway, and so you don't really know if there's someone there or not. And yeah, it's yeah. a bit of a nut. Yeah. So, so swinging it back right back to your photography and and the sort of things you've done. <laughs> no, it's all right. It's all right. It's, it's cool. This is what it's about. Is yeah, it's about everything. Um, so you did the scramble, and then that continued to the next to the next scramble, and a few more things came through. Yeah, so I've then um, shot scrambles as well as many as I can uh, since then, really, which has been a really cool thing. And so now, I mean, we only moved um, down to down to um, Oxfordshire, and we're like ten minutes down the road from this heritage now, uh, which is really really nice. So when I used to go and shoot the scrambles, like my dad uh, would would drop me texts, like, "Oh, we're going to scramble." I'm like, "Yeah," and he's like, "Oh, I'll drive down with you." I'm like, "I'm leaving at like six to get from Leicestershire down to yeah. down to here." So now it's like I can my alarm can go up, go up eight o'clock in the morning, and I'm there at half eight. So uh, it's uh, <laughs> a much bit nicer now. But then, um, yeah, no, so I suppose. Yeah, Vista Heritage has kind of noticed my, my work. Um, and then, I mean, I've always said that my earliest clients were um, Petrolicious, were my very, very first car client, and Classic Driver. Um, and then because those two have both got you know massive followings themselves, whenever some pictures of mine got posted on their social media, then I would get a lot more interest from, from a, a, you know, a range of people. And that kind of started the snowball of my career. Um and yeah, it was just, it's honestly, it's been absolutely crazy for the last seven years. Um, and yeah, I always thought to myself, oh yeah, I'll keep this car thing up until it all dries out and then I'll go back to doing, oh, you know, I'll carry on doing weddings at the time. And then, yeah, it never really stopped. And then I gave up the weddings and then the cars have just 
carried on. And then I was thought as well that motorbikes were in the same world as the cars. Totally different world. Oh, God, yeah. It's, um, a, it's a bit less like... That's what I found with motorbikes. It's like motorbikes is like... Spe- yeah, you're speaking French... And you're like, well, it's got we- it's got like wheels, but oh no no, you, you speak to a mo- a motor a motor cyclist completely different to what you speak to a, a car guy. Yep, exactly. I mean, I think the the aviation world is closer to the car world than the motorbike world is. So, I mean, that's where Morgan's f- have kind of dropping the middle with the three wheeler because is it a is it a car? Is it a motorbike? And um, yeah, no, we we love we love them. And um, but then with the with the mini side of things, I mean, I got my. That mid, that mid, eight May, uh, when I was 19. So basically, it started off because I was jealous that my brother had just bought a classic mini. Because it was cheaper for him as a 17 year old to buy a classic car, in this case, minis, um, and get himself insured on a classic car insurance than it was for him to get like a really crappy, you know, 10 year old car that couldn't get made to be very well. Um, and so when he got his mini, I was like, oh, that's really, really cool. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get one as well. So, yeah, when I got mine at, at 19, it was my daily up until I was about, I don't know, 23, something like that. Um, and then I, I thought to myself, I, need, I do need a car to get me, you know, these further distances that my job is now taking me. But I definitely don't want to get rid of the Mini. So the Mini did go into storage for a little bit. And I got this amazing Ford Puma, which I love. And Craig always takes the mickey out of me for loving. And I would definitely have one again. Well, um, the Puma, though, is that is a, ca- a Callum design car. So, yeah, it's... Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, it's, oh, yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that was it. Yes, yeah, so it um, is a pretty good-looking thing. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the new Puma is... A, yeah, it takes the name, but it isn't the Puma. But the, the Ford Puma, yeah. yeah, it was a... It was a, you know, two-door, coupe, high-roof line, kind of, like... It, lo- it was a good-looking thing, that car. Yeah, it was. I just, I just tease Amy on her... Like, she really does worship it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, when I just started photographing cars, I drove thousands of miles in that Puma, and you know the the Mini would come out when I wanted to go and see friends or family. Um, so yeah, no, I I, I've, I kind of miss the Puma now actually. Um, but yeah, the, 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 the quite a slight problem with with having all these these various vehicles is that we're now we've now become way too attached to all of them um because we always think like we'll buy them and then we're like okay that's just we'll put them in that into savings whenever we need some money we'll just sell it and then yeah get something else um but no i don't think we can ever get rid of any of our vehicles now so um yeah it's not it's not quite it's not quite the same i've got a an old shit one of the original um the chevy spark that i that i had was an original press car in yeah from 2009 and um and I just, I feel sad to get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I recently, recently bought an Austin Seven, as a semi investment. But yeah, it was the same sort of thing. It's oh, if we ever get this drive and put it out for sale. But now I think we're pretty attached to it. I'm not sure if it'll ever go anywhere. So, <laughs> Craig, Craig, you've got you've got uh, red, uh, red, um, uh, big red, is old, it big, old red, old big old red. red. Everyone just call it, it Big Red. Big red. Yep. It's not even big. <laughs> just really tall. It's just tall. It's just tall, okay. Tall Red then, how about that? Tall, tall Red. red. <laughs> That's going to be the new it's, basic, it's basically the same sort of footprint as a Mini. It's really small. Yeah, I've got Old Red. I mean, I've had that now, more, I don't know, maybe eight years, I think. I don't know how long I've had it. Um, yeah, we've got, because I've got Old Red, we've got the Austin 7, the Minis and the Land Rover. But yeah, Old Red's really kind of, I don't think I could ever get rid of that car. Um, so I just have to keep keep modifying it to keep it interesting in the future, I think. Um, but that's a, yeah, so that's a pre-war hot rod that I built seven years ago. And I raced out on the beach and on dirt and things like that. Yes, yeah, so um, I remember seeing. It, I remember seeing a really cool photo of that that racing on the beach. I, that that image is in my head of of that racing on the beach. So it's uh, yeah, it's yeah. pretty. It's pretty. It's been and that's been down at Bristol Heritage as well, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, whenever we can get it down there, it's much easier now we're closer. But it's not the nicest car to drive any kind of distance. So I've trailered it there a couple of times because it's just the the exhaust stops before the front of the cabin. So basically, if you drive anything longer than twenty minutes, you do start to get a little bit dizzy. <laughs> it's yeah. worse if you're the passenger. <laughs> like you'll start to feel sick after about fifteen minutes. You're like, oh no, no more. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not really made for cruising. I mean, 
you can you can tool around on it, but um, it's a bit loud as well. It's not. I don't know. It's one of those cars. It's the novelty is fantastic, but it does upset people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I mean, that's sometimes not that's not the best. Uh, the best, the best thing, but yeah, I, I, I still think it looks cool. I think it's a, it's a, it's a crack. I love thing. it. Yeah, it's. I mean, it, yeah, it's kind of become exactly what I wanted. I mean, I've wanted a hot rod since I was five or six years old, and I always thought I wanted like a really shiny one with flames. But as soon as I realised that you can get one that looks like it's been dragged through a hedge backwards and set on fire, then I was like, yeah, that's what I wanted. Yeah, that's it. Then, that's the one. Make- yeah. Um, no, there's something about it, definitely. I mean, it gets so much attention. I think. Um, it, it definitely precedes me. I mean, it, like, yeah, people don't know me. They know that car now. So <laughs> that's fine. And that's fine. That's okay. <laughs> but yeah, the car comes first. Oh, and there's Craig as well. But, you know, that's, yeah. that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. yeah. So, yeah. um... So, so with the bit, so after the business heritage, what? So with the magazines and stuff, what? So what? What's been the highlights that you've you've shot with the with the magazines and everything? Oh man, that's really tough because like when I first started shooting cars, I kind of thought that um, I like, had zero expectations that I, you know, do well at all. So every little thing that I kind of did that it went well, I was like, wow, I did this thing. So, like, the first time I got a picture in a magazine, I was so excited. Like, I went into Sainsbury's with my mom and I made a, like, take a photo of me holding up my magazine, which, so, yeah, I think it was Octane magazine. I got a few pictures featured in it. And uh, that was of this replica Ferrari P4 that I shot. And, um, yeah, so I was really excited. And then it kind of started to to go from there. And, uh, I mean... Each time I kind of have something new and exciting come up, I'm like, yeah, this is it. I don't think I'll get better than this. And then something else will come along, and I'm like, wow, this is really amazing. And then, like, you know, Craig and I as well together have managed to do some incredible trips. Like, we went to um, to Utah with Jago Land Rover, and uh, again to Sweden as well with Joe Land Rover, just to, to do two different shoots with their experience team. And you're kind of there, you know, photographing these cars rock crawling and as, as the sun is rising, and you think, huh. This is my job. This is really cool. Yeah. It, it's. I mean, I, I feel so so lucky and so blessed that you know that that kind of feeling does um, does come upon me quite a, a lot. Um, I mean, before all of the lockdown and everything, uh, I was like the last trip that I went on was um, I was in Portugal with a bunch of really really cool people riding motorcycles with Triumph, and I just thought, hmm. This is my job. This is cool. And then uh, February, I was with um, I was with Porsche actually, uh, doing some stuff for, for for their magazine, and that was in Finland. And we were out there for about ten days or something like that. And it's just the most so some of the experiences that my job has managed to, to take me on. I don't think. I mean, this is what the, the enthusiasm is still very much there because I don't think I'll be able to do this job forever. Just physically, I don't think I'll be able to do this when I'm like seventy if I haven't sorted the pension out. <laughs> so, um, I just, yeah, I think to myself, I just, I do try and take on in every opportunity that I can at the minute because it sounds, it, it, you, you know, it is so much fun and I enjoy my job so much that I think if I, if I don't do it now, then. At some point, this may stop, and I will look back on these experiences and, and be so grateful that I've done them. And that's definitely the kind of thing that keeps me going when it is really, really busy and I'm really tired or stressed. And then I think, oh, but really, this isn't a bad job. This is quite a yeah. good day at work. I mean, um, t- very, I mean, totally, very... like to- totally yeah. with you on, on the sentiment there. Like over the years of doing stuff, and you go back, you go, oh, actually, I did that, and I, I did that, and you, and you just kind of. You get to where you, you, you kind of you're just great grateful for doing it, and also kind of savouring it, and going actually, I'm just I'm very lucky to do this, and this I can count this as work, and uh, yes, and it's and it's and it's not you know, you're not in an office or you're not you know on a, doing the same thing every day because you just you know like being a freelance creative in the automotive sector, there is so many little things that 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 happened that you go, yeah, I, I never thought I'd experience this because of what I did, type of thing. So, in, so in terms of new mini, you've you've had the Countryman, or was it the, the Clubman you've had recently? No, the Countryman. So we had the Countryman yeah. S Works. Uh, John Cooper Works. John Cooper Works, sorry, yeah. yeah. Um, and we had the Cabriolet. Yeah, Cooper that S. That was Cooper S. Yeah, convertible Cooper S. 
Um, we were supposed to have two others since then. Yeah, but then the bloody virus has got in the way of that. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, when we first, um, the mini first said, would you like to, to borrow a car for, for a few months? And it made total sense because, you know, with our minis and we, it's our first cars, the longest cars we've, we've owned, um, yeah, I was like, absolutely, definitely want to give some of the, the newer cars a, a, a go. Um, so when they were like, do you want to borrow a convertible to begin with? And I was like, yes. So over last summer, we had this convertible and it was, yeah, it was just so much fun. Because they do feel like the classic minis, but you know that when you get in, every time, they'll actually start. I mean, I turn the key, there, there's no key settings, there's button pressing, and they actually will, will start. Whereas um, Craig's mini at the minute has got an issue where if it's sat for too long, I'll drive to Tesco in it and I will break down in the village like every single time, have to wait for like five minutes and then I'll start again. So um... yeah, it's fine after that though. <laughs> it's, I mean, I think, I think uh, it's called character, isn't it? That's character. <laughs> character. That's the yeah, one. That's the one. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, so it's, it's, it was awesome. It's, it is lovely to be able to have something that feels like a classic mini but actually works and you can get some speed and you're not worried about going the motorway on it. And then when um, we got offered the Countryman afterwards, um, we'll be completely honest, straight out. Initially, I was like, oh, okay, it feels like the least mini of the, the new minis. And I was, I was a bit concerned of, that I wouldn't enjoy it, basically. And so it kind of arrived on drive. And I thought, okay, well, I'll give it a go. Honestly, after three months of having that thing, absolutely loved it. Like, it felt like the John Cooper Works version was like a little racing car it was it felt that the talk that you, you had from it and i mean it was dangerous as well purely out of the cost of fuel because i'd get to like some traffic lights i'm like oh bugger i'm in the wrong lane and then i'm just like oh it's fine i'll put it on sport mode and it's like ah! <laughs> and so it, was, it helped my um poor driving for sure uh, <laughs> um and yeah no. oh no don't go again yeah, sorry it was... we, we were like low battery mode a second That's um that. yeah so uh no the, the, i've absolutely i miss the countryman actually because it was a really really fun car to, to have for a little while um but what do you think you're better at knowing how cars feel it's insane I? oh yeah no i, I mean the, the cabriolet i think for me i i thought that was a good choice because i don't think we'd ever buy a cabriolet no it's not the kind of the same amount. I've got two cars that don't have a roof, but um, <laughs> three cars that don't have a roof. Um, but then, yeah, the Countryman, is, as you said, really, we we didn't really want it. To to be honest, we were a bit sort of. But the the John Cooper Works version is just insane. I mean, I, I I'd heard that Pro Drive actually sort of said to me, "These are the dimensions you need to do if you want to go rallying and that the Countryman." So that's kind of how that car exists. Hmm. Sorry, I'm back again. It's uh, right. It's right. But yes, and you can t- you can totally tell that they they used it for developing for rallying. So it's it's a it's a good fun car. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's good. Um, and it's but it's ruined all other cars because I mean we've had a couple of cars that you sort of you'd think to be quick and and be quite awesome, and we come away quite disappointed because they yeah. didn't compare to the Countryman John Cooper. Works. It's ridiculous. Is, it, that's, uh, is that the one with the same engine as what's what's in the new Mini GP? Is that one? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. The most powerful engine they do in the Mini range at the moment, and it's in a Countryman. I mean, it's brilliant. It's yeah. great. Yeah. It, it, like, but when I had some people send me messages, be like, you know, what what really do you think about it? Especially having classic Minis and they've tried out the the um, the convertible. And I genuinely said, you know, if you, if you do want a, a family car, but you still want to feel like you've You've got a bit of fun. That is the car. I think if we perhaps if we bought a new car, that's probably yeah. the car we'd end up getting because it's insane on fuel though. So. <laughs> <laughs> but that's our, that's our driving. Yeah. <laughs> um, but saying that, the next one. So we were supposed to, uh, I think, take over soon um, the electric mini. So yeah. we're kind of waiting for all of this to calm down a bit so that we can get hold of the electric mini. See what that's like. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I had a. I had a. Uh, G- 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 uh, yeah, Ginny on, and uh, and she she really likes it. She really likes the electric mini. She says it was really really good. Yeah, we're we're looking forward to it. I think the I think the range thing will shouldn't be too much of a problem. It's just kind of in the right area. But yeah, we'll soon soon find out. So that's going to be fun. So yeah. so so in terms of like preps post cut, yeah, have you? 
have you been starting to get things planned? But you know, trying to have you been working with your clients to to shift you know shift uh, you know some of the shoots you had planned? What what's what's been your been been going on whilst on lockdown? Well, a lot of the events that got cancelled and postponed have all decided to move to September currently. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so September. Yeah, September. Well, the problem, yeah, the problem is in September or at the end of September, I will have had uh, my mini mayo for ten years. So I've got plans that I'm going to go on a quite a long road trip in it. And I was kept thinking to myself, oh, do I move that so I can make sure I can shoot some more of these events? And I thought to myself, I'll only have a 10-year anniversary once, whereas these events will probably go on for years, you know, many years to come. Yeah. So I think I'm still going to go and do this road trip. Um, and then in, in terms of other shoots and stuff, yeah, most everything really has been um, postponed. It's all just been on hold. Some people have been like, we'll get back to you with a date when, you know, we understand a bit more about what's going to happen. So... Um, yeah, like, this is the longest I've been at home for the last 10 years, I think, or so. Yeah, I think we, we, and we haven't really adapted, and I don't think anything will change in the future of how we do things. We we did launch just before, actually, and by coincidence, just before the lockdown, we actually launched Amy's Print Shop properly, and that's, that's kind of, that's helped a little bit, that's a different way of doing things. I think there's more we can do with that. I think we can... Um, we can work a little bit more with printed goods and sort of merchandise on that sort of side, so where we can see Amy's image on other things. Yeah. Um, but we want to make sure we do it the right way because I think the images are, you know, they're so stylized and they're so their own thing that you don't want to just throw it on a T-shirt and say, "Here's a T-shirt with Amy's picture on it." Yeah. It needs to be something else. Totally, totally agree. Same. Yeah. It, it's. It's it's getting that tricky balance between uh, merchandise and, uh, and not cheapening the brand, yeah, the product. Yeah. So yeah. for now, we're sticking with we got the prints. We're doing greetings cards, which work really nicely. Um, and then yeah, we'll see where we go from there. Yeah. So that's um, a few bits. Yeah, exactly. So uh, yeah, no, I mean, do you do any kind of merchandise stuff, or is it all prints? Uh, well, with my artwork, I've always traditionally just done fine art print because I've I've always believed that if you've got an original, you don't want to cheapen the original. The, no, you know, when people are buying an original for X amount of money, the value is in that original. And as soon as you start making smaller versions and canvases and everything else in between, the original kind of loses its its yeah yeah, its yeah. perceived you know, as much as it's perceived value, it's a value in my eyes of what I created. Um, yeah. Um, but with this stuff, some of it is quite cartoony and quite and quite. It will look lovely on t-shirts. And it's the first time I've created yeah. stuff. I thought actually that will look really nice on a tea towel. That will look really nice on a on a mug or or whatever. Um, yep. So so yeah, that's the that's the thought. But the the main thing is. All of these, all of these artworks, are going to go into a book. So the book is known as Continuous Wheels. That's on crowdfunded right now. Um, so the book is going to be crowdfunded. Fifty uh, percent of the books are already sold. Um, based on uh, three hundred images are going to be in that book. So three hundred over three hundred images, all done during COVID lockdown time. Um, and as all these videos are are recorded and documented. So they go onto YouTube. So there's a YouTube video of the creation process, uh, which people can watch back. Um, and then these are going to be scanned by the same guy who scans all my artwork. And, and then we're going to look at, other than the book, what else, what other merchandise potentially could be could be created. Yep. Yeah, no, T-shirts have worked really well as well. And also, like, I don't know about you, but when you meet people who really love a, a brand of cars, so, you know, for us, well, for, yeah, for, for us minis, um, you, you end up accidentally kind of getting all these mini things. So I've got about, I don't know, four different mini T-shirts, which I really like, and then people will want, you know, they they, they, they do have this, this love for, for, the, for their cars and everything in their house. It's like people who like the colour purple. Everything in their house is purple. People who like minis most of what is in their house is probably mini related yeah yeah um. so, so yeah so, so so what where where are your print where can people find your prints then are they through your website yeah. and yeah, I mean, the easiest way to get to them is in my Instagram bio. I've got a direct link. But, uh, yeah, you can go through my website. And the prints that we've chosen, or when I say we've, uh, yeah, I've chosen or 
I, I, the, the image that's, that I think not only would work as well as prints, but I'm really happy with that I think would work um, would work well on, on somebody's wall. And I've got like a, sec a section on there which is um, not just uh, car and automotive prints, but also like uh, I've been around the not around the world, but I've been a lot of places around this this planet and tried to get some really cool travel photographs as well. And I thought, you know, what, some of these are just too lovely to not have um, as prints. So I've got a shot of this this fisherman. He's got like a, a really wonderful nose and. Uh, He's, his face is just awesome so I thought you know what I've, I've got to put that as a, as a print that you can buy as well and that the picture of that bloke is the only photo of my own that I've got that we have on the wall um, and yes yeah, so I don't have any like car pictures of my own on the wall which is a bit weird actually um, and yeah so um, it just yeah the, the, the selection of some travel prints is definitely something I wanted to include in the shop as well um, and I probably would end up putting a few more on but I kind of wanted to see how they'd go to begin with because people primarily know me and my work for for the car and, and motorbike stuff so um yeah that was a bit of a, a kind of a sideways one but uh have we sold many travel friends so far yeah 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 have we yeah like cool. four or five I think nice yeah yeah I'm normally alongside a car one as well I think people yeah. aren't quite ready to admit that they are fully car <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, okay. we're, 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 we're falling <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Cool. Right, um, so. Yeah, no, they're doing really well because they're beautiful images and I think they get overlooked because you are now known as Amy Shaw, the car photographer. It, it kind of, yeah, there's so much more to your work. So it is nice to have that section. Yeah. Yeah. Try yeah. to anyway. But I mean, do you ever draw anything that isn't a car? I've done bikes. Uh, bikes I've done a few of now. Um, in this series, I've done, um, I've done a few figures. I did Mr. Bean on top of the Mini. I did, a, I did a plane yesterday, the Honda plane. Um, uh, it's one of those ones that when people ask for something different, I'm like, well, okay. I, I, don't, I, I don't, I don't, I don't run, I don't do it. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll try it. And then if it works, and that, yeah, it's about, for me, it's about enjoying it and enjoying the process, particularly with these ones, is enjoying the process of talking to somebody about their vehicles whilst, whilst doing it and finding out more about it. Yeah. No, exactly. Um, oh, I'm going to answer some questions that keep popping yeah, up. Yeah, you go We do ship internationally on all the prints. <laughs> um, yeah, it's all it's all all the international shippings on there, all the rates and everything. Anyway, sorry. Anyway, back to it. No, no, no. Honestly, if, if there's if there's if there's, if there's uh, questions popping up, do not worry because I, I can just waffle on. So it's. Um, <laughs> So, um, yeah, two little minis. Obviously, they're a little bit cartoony because of the foreshortening and, and whatever, but um, I quite like it. Looks all right, isn't it? Yeah, well, oh, I really yeah. like it. I think, I'm glad that we chose that photo as well. Because, um, yeah, as you said, the yellow background, like, like the colour color bases. Yeah. Well, I just thought if you move the car over and up a little bit, and then each car has its yeah has a has a bit of a has a yeah has its own position essentially. So hopefully you can see that on the screen. There we are. 